So, welcome back to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be joined by Chris and Nadi, ex Hearts player, Edinburgh City player, I believe, and so many other clubs. Yeah. So, since it's Black Lives History Month, um, how has it impacted on your life and footballing career of being, obviously, black? Well, being black is, um, well, is Black Lives Matter, actually, it was, for me, something, something wrong, because Black Lives Matter is like um, telling people then, my life matter. I don't need to tell people, I don't need the approval yeah. of anybody telling my life matter. My life matter. It, <laughs> I don't need to tell you that it matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I understand people will support it, but I'm not like a big fan of it. I already know my life matter. I don't need the approval of anybody or like they want to say of a black, per of a white person uh, to tell them my life matter. No, my life matter doesn't matter what they think. So I don't need to tell you. Oh, no, no, no problem, mate. No problem. It's not you. I mean, like in people in general. Sorry. All right. No, I was just <laughs> uh, thinking, like, how has it impacted on like growing up in France? Okay, sorry. Uh, you know, France, uh, despite white people who think is 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 a is a, a racist country. You know, uh, people wouldn't openly say to your face because there are some smart, some um, approach, um, hypocrite, but it's a very racist country. And um, if you want to make it, you need to be sometimes, unfortunately, two or three times or even four times better than, than the white boy. Mm. And, uh, and, um, and that make very, very difficult and because of that, you, you you always have to to keep everything to yourself, you know. And you can isolate yourself like this when you you part of a team where mainly it's white boys or stuff like that. It can it could be difficult, but in the life in general, um, I've not really lived in France because I moved when I was twenty, so I didn't really have my adult life uh, in France. You moved to Edinburgh, I believe. No, I moved in, uh, in, Sh in Sheffield first in 2006. Oh, right. Yeah. So I was quite young. But when I go back, I, I, I still could feel, you know, the way people... Like, for example, when I'm walking here, people are quite nice. And, and mm -hmm. um, you, you, you can see, obviously, sometimes people can push you away. But in France, everywhere you go, people will grab their purse. Um, uh, you know, if you want to go in a nightclub, if you if you're black and you want to go in a nightclub, you know it's not going to happen. You need to go with someone else. Uh, if it's a, black, a white person, would be it'd be better. It's absolutely, and the day, the age, like the 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 the, 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 the year that we are living in now, it should not happen. No, I agree. It should not happen. So, um, what in, what inspired you to get into football? Oh, it was it was my dad and my brother. My my dad was a, a coach. Uh, he always loved sports, but especially football. And and he wanted his kids to play football. My big brother was already playing. So, and when I was young, my dad kept putting it was a, a VCR. A big, uh, video of uh, Pele, you know, the Brazilian Pele. Yeah, yeah. And, like yeah. these videos again and again and again, and and as soon as I was able to play football, well, I was on the pitch already. Um, best goal you've ever scored. Well, best goal, like, well, you know, these two things. The best goal I think was against uh, Arsenal. Um. Well, one one net was the first time Sheffield had, uh, beat Arsenal. Um, 
and it was a really strong Arsenal team. So that was really, it was my best goal. But the most important goal for me was my first goal uh, in professional after five games when um, my dad came to watch me play. It was my first start. And I was only 18 or 17. And uh, and I scored. It was my first goal. My dad, uh, it wasn't, um, it was because it was a really hard uh, year for me. My dad wasn't um, understand and been told that he was crying. That was the most important goal for me, probably. Wow. Who is the most craziest manager you've ever worked with? <laughs> it's New Warnock. <laughs> it's New Warnock. Yeah, no doubt about this. New Warnock. Yeah. Uh, it was it was crazy for for many things. You know, Neil Neil would never come in in, in a training. Or Neil Warnock, coach, would never come in training on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. He would come on Thursday for the last fifteen minutes, and then he would take the session on the Friday. You you would play games after the games on the way back. You could could stop the bus and and buy pizza for everybody. It was it was honestly it was like a dad for me because when I moved into England, I couldn't speak English and he couldn't speak French, but he would try to to talk to me, whatever, like, try to talk to me, took me under his wing, invite me for dinner and stuff. So he, he's, a, he's an amazing man and uh, and really crazy. <laughs> In the dressing room, he would be like, always like, I couldn't understand, but he was always screaming, screaming, like to say something good or to say, to say something bad. He was screaming. And that was funny. I couldn't understand none of it. But I was laughing. Yeah, well, it's all part of the fun. Um... Yeah. Funniest joker throughout your playing career. <laughs> Cal Wilkie. I play with him in Anan. He like he just like to joke all the time. You know, he, it's not funny, but he likes to joke all the time. He never stop. The only time he stops is when we you, you start a game. And as soon as the game is finished, he's back to himself. That's the no. only time. <clears throat> Sorry. Can you go? No, it's fine. It's fine. That's it. All right. Um, I believe that you played with Rudy Scatchel at heart. I didn't really play with him because when I arrived, um, I think he was injured, and then he went to uh, to Marseille, I think, or uh, maybe not. I don't know where he went, but no, I, I think maybe couple trading sessions. That's it. What was he like? What was his character like? Like I said, I didn't really know the boy. I just knew he was, he was, he was nice, you know. Mm. He, was, he was really nice, but that's it. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. What did you listen to heading into the dressing room? I will listen. Uh, most of the time, it's, um, how you call this? Like, church music. Yeah, gospel, yeah. Yeah. I would some gospel, yeah. Um what was it like in the dressing room at half time when you were losing? <laughs> That's the last place you would, would like to be in. Um I was I think I guess it would be like in every dressing room, you know. You know, when you when you play for hearts. You don't expect any team to beat you. Like you could think about Celtic could beat you, Rangers beat you, but none of those are teams. So every time you get, you, you are losing, you know, then in the dressing won't be difficult and you need to wake up everyone. And because we had like, in this, when I was a heart, every player got a very strong personality. Every player actually could be leaders. And when you've got like 11 leaders on the pitch, could be a clash. So sometimes in dressing room, maybe uh, like <laughs> not fight, but depending on the game, but you, you could be close. Yeah. Has there any, been any bust ups in the dressing room? <laughs> yes, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, me, um, me and Jan Black at some point. What, Ian Black? Yeah, me and Jan Black, yeah. Me and Jan Black. Um, Everybody and um, and Michael Stewart, <laughs> um, Lee Wallace and uh, Ruben Palazuelos. Uh, that's the one I remember. Yeah. 
Did you win it? <laughs> there were no fights. Oh. That's it. Well, that's it. There were no fights. It was just a... No. It was a fight. Yeah. How do you keep positive? Just now I try to keep positive by talking when I'm not feeling my best. Uh, saying the way I'm feeling because I used to to keep everything to myself. So when I feel then I'm not feeling my best, I try to talk and read the Bible and yeah, to try to to, to um to stay positive this way. Yeah. Best way to do that. Sorry? It's the best way to be and um, yeah. keeping it all to yourself. What were you like growing up as a kid? I was I was very shy. I was very very shy. I I'm still a little bit, but I was very um, I was very shy. Uh, but I I love to laugh. Um, and I was very nervous. I'll say. That's yeah, I've been very nervous. I've been independent quite quick because I left my family when I was um, twelve. So I was I had to, I've, I've basically made myself. So you know, when you leave your parents quick, you need to um, to be ready for whatever comes your way. So I wouldn't back down, and that's that's the way I was because you know people are easy to step on you. And um, but I was I was I was um, I was working hard, very hard when I was young to to reach my goal. And unfortunately, once I reached it, I didn't work as hard as I should have. Best team you've played for? Well, I would say the the French national team under twenty one was the best. Like even the training session was like um, unbelievable. The, the 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 level was just crazy. I was on the pitch and I was just like wow, like <laughs> dreaming about those players while I was playing with them. Like in training was just so fast. Everything was so fast. Like everybody knew each other so well, despite you play for different teams but it was just like you know when i guess when very good player play together it yeah. just clicked like this you know and it just went it was just so fast everything was so 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 fast and you didn't need to ask for the ball the player seen you already you didn't need to to uh to to make the movement because you know that the guy will find you it was just like catching butter easy Who who was your football and I he, who's your football and heroes? Pelé. 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 We need to won the World Cup uh, when he was only seventeen and he, you know he didn't just win the World Cup. He he was the one win it, you know. He was uh, like uh, seventeen but it was just um, the star. He was a star, he was Without him, I don't think the, the, the Brazil would have won the World Cup. And and then what he's done after that, it was just unbelievable for such a young age, and especially where I came from. So, yeah, you know, it's this kind of person you can just look up to them. Yeah. Best team talk you've heard? Excuse me, the best team what? Best team talk you've heard. Best team talk I've heard. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no best team talk. It, I think, you know, a, a manager should come at the beginning of the game and say, guys, you know, for, coach, can't, coach can't really teach a professional how to play football. Because if you manage to, to get professional, you already know, you know. The, 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 the coach can just correct you and just you need to adapt to the system he wants to play. So the so only thing the coach should tell you is just go on the pitch, have fun, give everything you got and have fun. Because if you go on the pitch and you don't have fun, you can't perform. So this few coaches will say, guys, you got nothing to lose. Just go on the pitch. It's just a football game. Have fun, enjoy. And usually when you do stuff like that, you just got a good result. You know, even when you lose, you still positive because you gave everything you've got. You had fun on the pitch, and uh, everybody was working the same way. But sometimes, you know, you play against players who are better than you, so it doesn't matter if you give your best. Their best is better than your best. 
What's the best Adam the Derby you've played in? My first one. Um, we drew 1-1 one, one, and it was my, my first goal. Uh, that's when I realised how how hard found crazy. You know, the, the noise they made that, that day and um, it was just it was just amazing. Loudest player you've met? Loudest player? Yeah. I don't like to say his name, but that's going to be the second time. Is Michael Stewart. Just talk too much. Oh, Michael Stewart. Just talk too much. Oh, well. <laughs> don't really want to develop my answer, but yeah, talk too much. Who's the best player you've played with and against? The best player will be uh, Blaise Matuidi. He was just, he was so young, but you could see that he was achieved a lot. And uh, the best player I played against will be Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. It was, it was good. But you know, I play against, uh, now, now I think I play against Jogba as well, and Jogba was just unplayable. You know, it's, it's like um, someone, I played, um, I spoke with, um, oh, I forgot his name, he used to play for Everton, centre back, Sylvain Distin. And he, because obviously I'm not a defender, and, and he said, you know, when you play against Didier Drogba, and the ball come and he puts your, his hand on your chest just to hold the ball. Yeah. You feel like there's 50 people holding you and you can't move. Just to show how strong he was and distant wasn't a kid. He was like probably six foot three, six foot four, strong, like very, very strong. And but he said when Drogba put his hand on him, he can't move. You can't he's too strong. And when so Cristiano Ronaldo Tilly Drogba, yeah, was up there. Up there. Who's the toughest opponent? There's few. I played against um, Carvalho. Carvalho was one of the, the best. Um, not the fastest, but so, so, so smart. Vidic as well. Vidic was just so strong. And you know, when you play, sometimes you try to make the, the, the striker forget, the defender forget about you. But it's like, <laughs> when you play against Fidic, it's like he don't care about the game, he just care about you. He don't care about what's happening up there. He's just focus on you. So you can't make him forget about you because all he think about is you. And that makes it very, very difficult to play against. Do you have any nicknames? No. 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 People call me nads. Um, when, I was in, nads. Um, when I was in Sheffield, they used to call me Limo because Nate or Limonade. <laughs> that was stupid. Um, if, uh, if you wasn't a footballer, what would you be? If I wasn't a footballer, what would I be? Um, I don't know, football coach. I would like to, I hope I will do something like related to football. What's the best night out you've had? Well, I don't really do, uh, with the team, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really do a night out with the team. I've been once or twice, but one I've done was in Sheffield and went to Manchester. And um, I was driving a Q7 at the time, a seven-seater. And um, we went to Manchester. And around three or four o'clock, players wanted to go home. And I was a taxi. So I had like, I think, six players or seven or eight, I don't know. They were like all in a car. And, <laughs> and I traveled around all Yorkshire to drop them, all the players.
And you paid for the taxi? Yeah. Now, I dropped them. I was driving because I don't drink. All right. I had to drive, drop every player I was there. So I, was, I dropped some player in Manchester, which we were there, so it was fine. I dropped some player in Leeds. Um, I don't even remember. I just remember when I went home, it was 9 o'clock. And we left at half three or something like that. And could you imagine I couldn't even speak English? All I could hear is, turn left, turn right, go straight. <laughs> What's the best game you've been involved in? Um, the game I think at Dundee against Dumbarton when we won the league. That's one of the best games um, I was involved with. Funniest moment in football? Yeah, winning the league with Dumbarton, with uh, Dundee. It was nice. Best football chant you've heard, heard sung about you? Yeah. <laughs> One man, two men cannot carry Nadi. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's funny. Isn't that the Hibs fan that started that? Yeah, I know. I loved it. You actually <laughs> like that? It was funny. It was funny. Being an outfit. It was, it was funny. Sometimes I remember in the dressing room they would sing that. It was, it was funny, it was funny. Do you can the song? One man, two man, cannot carry Nadi. Two man, three man, four man, five man. <laughs> no, it, was, it was nice, it was, it was funny. It was funny. Who's your biggest friend in the game? Um, it's called Damien Perkis. He's a, he used to be international Polonese. Um, he played in France, he played in championship in England, he played the Euro 20, I don't even know which Euro he played, um, because we started as academy together. Uh, we knew each other since we were 13, and uh, until now we're still very close. Yeah. And now I believe you're now with Dumbarton? No, no, now I'm playing, um, I'm not playing, just now. Oh, you're not? No, man. No. I thought you were. I'm on, I'm, I'm on uh, I play for Troon just now. Oh, yeah, yeah, Troon. How Trun. was your experience with the city? Yeah. No, you I was the... in Barton, wasn't that? You watched the game against Edinburgh City when I was playing for Anand? Aye, I that that game. Yeah, we lost every game in, in Edinburgh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, how did you find, like, like, what's the best Hearts, Hibs Hearts derby you've played in? The best Hearts derby I've played? Like, the best derby, like, between Hibs and Hearts. Yeah, like I said before, the one where we drew 1-1. Uh, Is there was any one others? No, I think... This one was was very special to me. It was my first um, my first derby, and I don't I didn't think at the time I could understand the the I didn't have the understanding of the the derby um, because I, I don't think I ever played a, a derby before like this. I was playing in France, so derby was against a team um, it's called Sedan when I was playing for Choice, which who are in the same um, not even we are like one hour from each other. Mm. One half, so it wasn't really a derby. Uh, when I was in Sheffield, we didn't play against Sheffield Wednesday. So actually, that was my first real derby. And um, yeah, the atmosphere was just amazing. How did you cope with getting the deco for the Hebs fans? You know what? At the time, I saw I was coping well. It's after, afterwards, and uh, I was affected inconsciously but um if not it was, it was i think it was funny at the time it was sometimes was funny and sometimes they give me the motivation to uh to make them leave the to let make them leave the stage of ASCP. so you enjoy getting stuck off for the hebs fans yeah 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 i wish i were playing again i was playing against them every week would you ever sing for hebs sing for hebs would you <laughs> no no, I know. You know what? You, you never know what kind of person, but I don't think that. 
and on Singapore. What team do you support? I don't really support any team. Obviously, I, I, I like the team I've played with winning games. Um, for example, um, Hearts was playing against Dundee uh, I think last week. Uh, I wish it would have been a draw. But I'm happy for Hearts to have won the game and I'm got it and Dundee lost. Yeah. So it's a team I played for. I'm, I'm, I support them, but I'm not really like someone who be like following every score or stuff like that. No. Yeah. So what I'll do is once I end, uh, can I carry on talking to you? Okay. So how many likes for the video? Sorry. How many likes? How many likes? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know because I don't know how many subscribers you've got. I've got 770. Let's see, 770 then. Fair enough. But thank you for taking your time out, eh, Nadi? Welcome, man.